And the first thing that we're gonna talk about today is this massive controversy and scandal around one of the biggest creators on pretty much any platform, Mr. Beast, AKA 22 year old Jimmy Donaldson. Today, a video came out from someone that supposedly worked with Mr. Beast, exposing him for his videos being fake. The allegations against Mr. Beast are bad. Like these aren't good allegations to have at all. The person that everyone knows as a saint, you know as someone who is the complete opposite. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind, just like actors, Mr. Beast and Jimmy Donaldson are two different people. The name Mr. Beast is one of the most recognizable brands on the entire internet today. With almost 90 million subscribers and over 14 billion views on his main channel, and a combined 150 million subscribers across all his channels, he's built an entertainment empire with the ability to reach more people than most could ever dream of. But there are a lot of things about Mr. Beast that you probably don't know. His extremely rapid rise to the top combined with the sheer scale of the operation he's built, have made him a very juicy target for both opportunistic sharks who smell blood in the water and earnest people who genuinely see him as a villain who needs to be stopped. But what claims have these people actually made? And what evidence do they have? And most importantly, who is Mr. Beast really? Is he hiding something? And what makes Mr. Beast uncancelable? It's just different for our industry because yeah. like, you could literally just say one mean thing to them and then they turn around and quit and make a video and like ruin your career. That's yeah. true. So it's like, it just gets really messy because everyone can use social media. That's true. Jimmy Donaldson grew up in Greenville, North Carolina with his brother and sister. Being born in 1998 meant that Jimmy was part of the first generation to grow up watching YouTube. Like many kids, Jimmy decided from an early age that he wanted to be a YouTuber. But unlike all the other kids who gave up on their dream and got a real job instead, Jimmy had an epiphany. I don't remember the YouTuber's name, but some YouTuber's uh, ad revenue, he was hacked and it was leaked and it showed that he did made like 300 grand over three years. And I made like two videos on that and I was just so shocked. I was like, yeah. guys, and I remember like yeah, telling yeah, everyone yeah. I know and they're all like, who cares? I was like, guys, YouTubers can make money. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it was just cool to be, did you know they can make money? I'm like a stupid yeah. teenager, like really young. I was like, how is this possible? I was like, that's so much money. That's more than like my, my yeah. mom makes, you know, yeah. in like so many years. So at 13 years old, Jimmy started a channel that would end up changing the world one day. But for now, it would just have Minecraft videos. Jimmy called his channel Mr. Beast 6000, and he wasn't afraid to experiment with his content and try new things. The channel started to get traction when Jimmy combined his Call of Duty gameplay with commentary on trending topics, like how much money YouTubers make. By the end of 2015, Jimmy hit 10,000 subscribers, and to celebrate he did a Q&A with his mom. And the next question is, what is your opinion on me doing YouTube as a full-time job? It depends how fast it gets me to retirement. Oh, um, retirement. Okay, you just uh -huh. care about the YouTube money. Over the next couple of years, the Mr. Beast channel would see steady growth with commentary on YouTuber intros and thumbnails, giveaways, pranks, giveaway pranks, and everything in between. But in 2017, Mr. Beast really came into his own, commercially and artistically. He started doing extreme challenge videos, where he counted two extremely high numbers and read the longest word in the English language. These videos were often hours and hours long, and people loved the fact that he was willing to do pretty much anything for content. I think one comment sums up this era of Jimmy's channel perfectly. Before he could spend absurd amounts of money, he spent absurd amounts of time. Once the views started rolling in, so did the money. Jimmy had always said he wanted to make the best videos possible and reinvest the money he made from YouTube into the next video. And he started to do exactly that. Giving $10,000 to Twitch streamers, Uber drivers, pizza delivery guys, anyone that Mr. Beast thought it would be fun to give people money to for content, he did it. Mr. Beast's channel was exploding, and he started to get a lot of mainstream attention. With more views came even more money, and Jimmy's ambitions for the scale of his videos only continued to grow. To keep making his videos bigger and better, he was going to have to hire people, lots of people. But with new faces comes new challenges, and not everyone in Mr. Beast's circle would see him as such a benevolent philanthropist. In the spring of 2018, Mr. Beast needed editors, videographers, and pretty much anyone who could help him make videos. He offered to fly people out for a week who wanted to work for him as kind of a test run. The video they worked on was filmed and edited, and everything went off without a hitch. 
at first. Then, a few weeks later, a YouTuber with nearly 100,000 subscribers called Fly Does YouTube posted a video called My Experience Editing for Mr. Beast, Worst Week of My Life. In it, he made some claims about Mr. Beast that brought Jimmy's character into question. And all of a sudden he's like, yo, I was like, so, so let's go film more. Like, we all, we we're all supposed to film more. He's like, yo, you guys go film more. I'm like, are you coming? Like, do you want to come film your video? He's like, no, uh, just go, you guys just go get footage. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? It, it, it's foreign to me, dude. You know, I make YouTube videos. Okay. I've had a couple of, I'm not, I'm not trying to sit here and say I'm better than Mr. Beast, but yo, when you make a YouTube video for your channel, you should, you know, you, you, Dude, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, we'll we'll go film your video without you. That no, that's cool, yeah. In addition to claiming that Jimmy wasn't involved enough in the production of his own video, Fly also claimed that Jimmy was extremely demanding and hard to work for. He or he wants business partners. He doesn't want to be he doesn't want to be friends. He doesn't want to have fun. And Fly also claimed that Mr. Beast exaggerated his videos and lied about some of the details to make them sound more extreme. Well, my four million subscriber was in a different state. We've been driving for four hours, me and Chris, the U-Hauls behind us. Okay, he just said he's been driving for four hours. We went a state north, dude. We, dude, we drove two and a half hours there. Fly's video began to get traction, and it looked like Mr. Beast could be in trouble. A couple of days later, Mr. Beast went on drama alert to talk about what had happened. I can lay it out for you guys. He, it's a guy that I brought down for a week. You know, I do a lot of crazy videos on my channel, and so I just brought him down for a week. He was in two videos where we tip waitresses, and uh, the other one, we gave my Formula subscriber a couple million cookies. And so anyways, it starts like this. I pay for his plane ticket, his Uber, his hotel for a week, his Uber, and his plane ticket, which he made a 25-minute quote-unquote exposing video on me, but doesn't mention that I spent thousands of dollars getting him here. It's paid him $750 for like five days worth of work, which is really good pay. Doesn't mention any of this. So I feel like he's already lost his credibility because he doesn't even mention anything. He's so biased. So this is the thing that really bugs me, right? He has all these issues, quote unquote, but he doesn't say any of them to me while he's here. He doesn't talk to me while he's here. He just bundles it all up. You want to know why? And I think, you know, it's kind of malicious intent so he can make this 25 minute video and blow everything out of proportion when he gets home. You know, if he had these issues, why didn't he bring him up while he was here with me? Why did he wait till he got home to shit talk me behind the screen where he could fabricate? After Mr. Beast expressed his frustration with Fly not bringing up these issues in person, Keemstar asked him if there was any truth to the claim that Mr. Beast wasn't there for most of the filming of his video. And the answer was surprising. Basically, you know, we're there, we're at Hooters because we tip them. And, uh, you know, I eat some wings because I'm undisciplined, whatever. And basically, I guess I kind of have to bring it up because it, it makes sense. I have Crohn's. And so obviously wings and Crohn's disease don't go well. It caused mine to flare up and I really wasn't feeling well and it was really acting up. So I said, hey, you guys go film the rest of the video. I want to go nap. I got to take it easy. You know, we have a sponsorship on the video because, you know, we're giving away sponsored money. We have deadlines. Video has to get filmed. Jimmy's rebuttal was accepted by most people online, and while his answers to Keemstar made sense to most, this was a new side of him that they had never seen before. But for anyone who still had doubts about what actually happened that week, Fly left some hints about his own motivations inside his exposed video. If you edit his entire videos, even make his entire videos, he won't link you in the description. He wants nobody else to get credit. He doesn't want anybody else to get views. You and the team are great. You guys are going to go so far. You actually won't if you don't change something about your business. Um, I'm not going to be surprised when your team members quit on you. It almost seemed while I was there that I was a threat to him because I had like almost 100k. Like he knew that I had 100k. It almost seemed like I was a threat to him just the way he like approached me. At the time Fly made this video, Mr. Beast had over 4 million subscribers, and the idea that someone being paid to do an editing job would also expect and feel entitled to a shout out of some kind or a link in the description in addition to the money they earned seemed completely ridiculous, and painted a picture of someone who took the job just for clout. Mr. Beast was able to move on from this incident, but it wouldn't be the last time there was a big falling out between him and someone that worked for him that threatened Mr. Beast's reputation. Even though Fly's claims didn't really stick to Mr. Beast, the drama did draw the attention of mainstream media. More specifically, the attention of Taylor Lorenz, who just a couple of weeks after the Fly drama, wrote an article titled, YouTube's Biggest Philanthropist Has a History of Homophobic Comments. In the article, Taylor made a point to mention that yes, Mr. Beast acts like a modern Robin Hood, but he doesn't give away all his money. She then showed that she had gone through all of his tweets and videos looking for anything problematic she could highlight. She found a tweet where he said, Windows is gay. And then two more tweets 
from years prior where he had used the F slur. She also noticed that in the past he had wore a shirt that said, I'm not gay, but $20 is $20. In addition to this hard hitting journalism, she somehow actually managed to get him on the phone for an interview. She mentioned that Jimmy showed no regret or remorse for his crimes against humanity. Jimmy told her, I don't think anyone cares about this stuff. I'm just a dumb kid that makes YouTube videos and I don't like doing interviews before hanging up. And that was pretty much that. Mr. Beast may have weathered the fly in Taylor Lorenz allegations, but there were more serious problems coming up soon in Jimmy's future. The person that everyone knows as a saint, you know as someone who is the complete opposite. On October 5th of 2019, someone named Sword Turner posted a series of tweets pinning some serious allegations on Mr. Beast. Like Fly, he had worked as an editor for Mr. Beast and said it was the most mentally draining time of his life. I was yelled at, bullied, called mentally re and replaceable by Mr. Beast every day. He went on to say that he was made to feel like an idiot and wasn't credited for his work. He also claimed that Mr. Beast intentionally wouldn't set people up for success after leaving the team, and that they were repeatedly forced to re-sign non-disclosure agreements, presumably as some kind of intimidation tactic. After people in the Twitter comments told him he should make a video detailing the allegations, Fly Does YouTube replied to Turner, advising him to be careful, saying, you might end up getting words thrown in your mouth, words twisted, and the whole nine yards no matter how much proof you have, but do what you think is right. Turner's reply was especially interesting, saying, yeah man, when you made your video, the office was in a panic mode because everything you said was true. There were basically a how can we cover this up meetings rather than a how can we fix this ones. Then the momager wanted to get all your clients to blacklist you. Toxic. This was a bombshell. If Turner's claims ended up holding water, the hostile and abusive work environment he described would threaten Mr. Beast's career and reopen Fly's allegations since Turner had now co-signed them too. But most importantly, what was actually going on inside Mr. Beast's operations? The internet was in a frenzy waiting for Turner's video to come out. They didn't have to wait very long. People praise Mr. Beast, whether that be just people around me, people online, everyone's like, this is the best guy on the planet. And while he is definitely a good guy, I'm not going to take anything away from his charitable efforts that he's done. It does get annoying when the person that everyone knows as a saint, you know as someone who is the complete opposite. Turner went on to claim that Mr. Beast continually deleted the editing file he had been working on and made him start over. He went on to say that Jimmy's mom, working as a manager, reminded Turner multiple times that he was replaceable. And constantly I would just be called, I'd be replaceable from his mom and I'd be a from Jimmy. So yes, being emotionally hurt from this makes sense. I mean, I mean, feeling like you're about to join a family when you get baited into the team and made feel like this is going to be a very welcoming environment and then being known as replaceable and when you edit videos just doesn't make sense. After the video dropped, people began scouring Turner's old tweets and videos to see if what he had said in his past lined up with the claims he was making now. It turned out that there was a video on Turner's channel from about a year earlier that was extremely damaging to the case he was making now. Turner made this video, informing people of why he was leaving Mr. Beast's team. They wanted people who were gonna be there for the long term. And I was working as hard as I could every single day that I showed up to those offices. And they told me that they admired like my work ethic, everything was good about what I did and I really didn't do anything wrong. It was just that they wanted people who would be there for, for the long run. So they asked me my final decision if I still plan on doing other things in the fall. And I was like, yes. And they were like, well, because of that, we're gonna let you go. So it was basically mutual. However, they did say some other things which were so kind of them. So what they did right after that, after they let me go, they said, all right, so we pay for the apartment that you live in right now down the road with other people. Also, by the way, Mr. Beast paid for my rent every month when I lived in North Carolina. And he said, all right, you can live here as long as you want. You can literally stay in this like pretty expensive apartment just until you feel comfortable leaving. Don't feel like you're in a rush. Stay as long as you want. Stay for months if you want to. It doesn't matter to us. And he was willing to pay my rent and let me live in that apartment. They're still paying me right now. I'm still technically working. I'm not gonna give like any numbers or anything. They said, we're, we're still gonna pay you for a while. And that is basically funding my trip to backpack across Asia, which is so insane. Just like imagine that he's saying, you don't have to work for me, but I'll still pay you. And because of that, I hope that lets you live in LA or whatever you wanna do, go to college, backpack Asia, whatever you wanna do after this, I wanna set you up for that. And that is, that's so insane. I'm just thinking about it right now. I've never really thought about it, but if you're watching this, Mr. Beast, I 
I love you, bro. So not only does he let me live in an apartment rent free, he gives me tons of, I'm not, I don't want to say tons of money, but he gives me a lot of money to fund whatever I want to do after this. Whatever my aspirations are, he's just like, I want you to do what you want to do. So here you go. Now fly, my little dove. I mean, he didn't really say that, but basically. This video directly contradicts almost every single point that Turner had made in his new video. How could Turner say that they weren't set up for success after leaving when Mr. Beast offered to pay his rent and salary for months after he wasn't even working there anymore? And why was he gushing with praise for Mr. Beast and the team if it was so horrible? Something wasn't adding up. In response to these criticisms, Turner released DM conversations between himself and a couple of friends that took place while he was working for Mr. Beast. He told one friend that working for Beast is like being a videographer for North Korea, saying they were dishonest on payment, being reminded that they were replaceable, and being very demanding during production. Turner leaked another conversation where he told a different friend of his the story about Mr. Beast repeatedly deleting the file he was working on. But people on Twitter were quick to point out that texts to his friends aren't really evidence, just word of mouth. Without actual proof of any of this, all the screenshot showed was that his story had been consistent, not necessarily true. But there were other breadcrumbs from the past that people discovered and tried to piece together. When Fly Does YouTube made his allegations about a year and a half prior, Turner weighed in, saying, as the guy who Mr. Beast hired instead of Fly, and the person who Fly talked about in his videos, I can state that Mr. Beast treats everyone on his team, including me, with high amounts of respect. It is a super high energy work environment. To be honest, never had a better job. YouTuber Optimus asked Turner about all of this in an interview. I asked him a bunch of questions about the situation, I got his responses, which you'll get here. If Mr. Beast was so mean to you, why did you paint him so positively for so long? I didn't want to paint him negatively for fear of what's happening right now or being blacklisted from the editing community like the last guy to tell the truthful video about this, which in my video there's a screenshot showing his claims were true. Granted, I could have said nothing at the time, but there was a time I'll admit to clout chasing. At the time, I was fine with writing off the coattails of Mr. Beast's name under positive light. This was over a year ago. I finally worked up the courage to make this statement and provide all of the proof that I can. I've really shot myself in the foot with that video and I should not have lied with that video, but I did. So Turner says that his old video praising Mr. Beast was lying. It's clear that the old video and the new one are so contradictory that one of them must be filled with lies, if not both of them. The YouTuber Boblax came up with an interesting theory about what actually happened. Turner had said himself that he left working Mr. Beast to go backpack Asia, taking the extra money they had given him to fund the trip. Boblax started connecting the dots and said, quits working for Mr. Beast to move on to other things, praises Mr. Beast in his video talking about it. One year later, other things don't work out as well as he hoped. Mr. Beast is now an asshole who treated him like shit. If you're going to make a bullshit for clout, maybe delete the video that contradicts everything you're saying first. Turner continued to clickbait Mr. Beast's name for over a year after the incident, but given how much conflicting evidence there was, the majority of people didn't end up believing Turner's claims, and they didn't have any lasting effect on Mr. Beast's reputation or growth. But this wasn't the last time they'd be used against him. Mr. Beast's videos continued to become bigger and bigger, making his audience larger and larger, feeding the cycle of ever-increasing video production budgets as Jimmy continued his endless quest for making the best videos possible. Over the next couple of years, Mr. Beast would hire an extensive team to help create and produce his huge video ideas, launch his own line of burgers, raise over $20 million to plant 20 million trees with Team Trees, and his videos became some of the most popular content on the entire internet. But as Mr. Beast main channel crossed 60 million subscribers, a new threat to Jimmy's sparkling clean reputation would come from an old character in the story of Mr. Beast. In May of 2021, the New York Times would publish an article titled, Mr. Beast, YouTube star, wants to take over the business world. The article lists some of Mr. Beast's achievements, but also mentioned that he had been criticized for his use of slurs and offensive jokes in the past. The article goes on to detail Turner's complaints about Mr. Beast creating a hostile work environment, but fails to mention Turner's earlier video and tweets where he raved about how great Mr. Beast was and how he paid his rent and gave him money above and beyond the work he did for them. Next, the article mentions Nate Anderson, who said he worked for Mr. Beast for a week in 2018. Nothing ever worked for him, he said. He always wanted it a certain way. Nate said he had received threats and hate comments from Mr. Beast fans after coming forward with his accusations. As for Jimmy, he declined this 
this interview. A Mr. Beast representative told the Times, when Jimmy was a teenager and was first starting out, he carelessly used on more than one occasion a gay slur. Jimmy knows there is no excuse for homophobic rhetoric and has grown up and matured into someone who doesn't speak like that. Who wrote this article anyways? As it turns out, it was none other than Taylor Lorenz, the same Taylor Lorenz who wrote the Atlantic article about Jimmy years before. When the New York Times article said that Mr. Beast's early videos were criticized for their use of slurs and offensive jokes, Taylor just linked back to her own article from 2018 in the Atlantic where she had dug through Jimmy's old tweets. And who exactly is Nate Anderson? Turns out this is Fly Does YouTube. Taylor even listed his failed exposed video on Mr. Beast as a source. Seems like even years later, he still felt strongly enough about it to give an interview to Taylor Lorenz. And how is Taylor so good at digging through Jimmy's old tweets and videos, but not Turner's? Her research seems pretty selective at best, and the article was not taken seriously by most on YouTube at the time. Mr. Beast would weather another storm without so much as a tweet from him. Since the New York Times article, a few other minor controversies have popped up regarding Mr. Beast, the biggest of which was probably the buzz his recreation of Squid Game caused. The video involved hundreds of people, cost $3.5 million for production and prize money, and as of today has nearly 200 million views. Jimmy has said in multiple interviews that his ambition has been to make the best video possible. And to do that, he continues to pour money back into his production rather than hoard it for himself. After running Team Trees in 2019, Mr. Beast launched Team C's in 2019. 2021 and raised over 30 million dollars to remove 30 million pounds of marine debris from the world's oceans. With movements like these, it's hard for anyone to make an earnest case that Jimmy is secretly a villain pretending to be a hero without hard evidence in hand. And so far, no one has produced any. As for some of the people in this story, Fly is now a Fortnite YouTuber, Turner makes rugs and lives in a van, Taylor Lorenz is working for the New York Times and is currently being sued for defamation, and children on Twitter are still stupid. If if Mr. Beast's trajectory continues, it's likely he will continue to dominate modern entertainment in a way that very few have done before. But even though so much around him has changed, his earnestness and work ethic are an example to a new generation of kids who want to be YouTubers on how to do it ethically and be a force for good in the world. And that is what makes Mr. Beast uncancelable. If you like this video, you'll probably also like my uncancelable video I made about PewDiePie. Even for huge PewDiePie fans, you'll probably learn some things you never knew before. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay weird, internet. See you next time. Peace.